Dawn breaks over Exmoor in southwest England, bordering the village of Porlock in Somerset. To the north lie the waters of the Bristol Channel. Twelve hundred people live in Porlock. It's a tranquil village with a 12th century church and a 13th century pub. Morning, Caroline. Not a bad day. A couple of things would you remind me to do? Keith Lister has lived and worked in this area for most of his life. He's 59 and will shortly be retiring. I want to ring up Martin Elwood before I start. Um, and can I have my post? Keith Lister has worked in the National Health Service since it started 35 years ago, when the idea of free health care for everyone was revolutionary. But now, People accept the fact that they will be registered with a general practitioner almost from the moment they're born, and that they need never pay for treatment, unless, of course, they want to, by going as private patients. In the early diagnosis of disease, in prescribing powerful drugs, the family doctor holds the lives of patients in his hands. We struck oil. Put it down there, okay? Thank you. I think a general practitioner is a friend of the people and he looks after them and he looks after their health and I see myself as long standing here and I hope the patients in the village look upon me as a friend too. Keith Lister has a single-handed rural practice. He's the traditional image of the paternal country doctor, always available at any time of the day or night and in all weathers. He's had both to take to his skis and fly out by helicopter to get to emergency cases on the snowbound moors. Yes, yes. I think you said it. Yes, here, yeah, Doctor. Um, oh, well, it's much more relaxed here. It's a bit chaotic up there. Although Keith Lister is single-handed, he can call in a specialist from the local hospital when he feels a second opinion would be useful. You won't feel anything from it. In this case, the specialist is doing an electrocardiograph for a patient who's complained of heart trouble. I, well, really, I can find no evidence of any organic heart disease. I think this abnormality is a, an abnormality of function rather than anything else. Even, even a Rolls-Royce engine can miss a beat one, once or twice. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Hello. Hello. Jimmy, not very well. What sort of night? Not very good. High temperature, sore throat. General practice is the unglamorous end of the medical profession and can involve a lot of routine visiting in patients' homes, especially in the country, where buses are few and people find it difficult to get to the surgery. That's right. Shut. Don't eat it. It's just over normal. But a home visit can often tell a doctor a lot. He can pick up clues which, in some cases, can help to pinpoint the exact cause and nature of the illness. Here we go. Uh, still. In Porlock, it's very much part of the job. Keith Lister knows his patients, their families and their problems, often from the cradle to the grave. In return, because they know he is committed to them, the patients respond with trust. And this trust, he believes, is a vital part of the healing process. It's I was laughing and saying, you can use this hand if you want to. Keith Lister accepts the fact that because of the role he has chosen, his private life will be constantly disturbed. He can never sit down to a meal, take a bath, go to bed, without knowing that a phone call can summon him to an urgent case. Now, now, this hand, that's right. I'm going to help you. I'm going to hold your arm, and I want to see you walk just here, a step or two. Mm. Would he? Yes. Say he'll walk out in the garden, would he or not? I think if one's honest that nobody can avoid being ill from time to time in life. And the worry of being ill associated with the cost of it is unacceptable in life. Well really, Porlock is a goldfish bowl in a hill country. On the north side is the sea, 
There are hills as you go west down into Cornwall and Devon, and Minehead is an urban area six miles away, and the hill country is immediately behind me on the south side. So the majority of my patients are in a small area of about three, four miles. I don't think I face anything like the problems that one would expect. I think that the hill farms and the rural areas are not at all demanding. I enjoy working in the National Health because I'm able to visit when I want to visit. I never have to be worried as to what it will cost. And to be honest, and I am cost conscious of medicines and drugs, which I accept nowadays are very high indeed. If I want to prescribe, yes, I can prescribe. And I do. I prefer it to a private practice. Ten out of ten, the clean tone. The bane of most doctors' lives is to be approached while they're off duty. But to Keith Lister, it's almost a way of life. He'd feel he was failing his patients if he held back from giving advice and help, wherever and whenever it's sought. No other problem. No, no. Well, yes. I just did it my hand the other day. I always like to look at that, and I don't know. That finger there. It's very stiff and sore there. You could have cracked a little bone there, I think. Nothing to do about it. I'll give you something to rub in. He carries with him in his car a complete set of medical drugs that might be needed at any time. But he regards his intimate knowledge and the personal touch which he can offer as almost his most valuable contribution to the care of his patients. I do a baby clinic once a month, which is uh, vaccination and immunization. And I get an opportunity to see all the babies in the village, chat to mothers. Keith Lister believes that the single-handed doctor may be a dying breed because of the strain it puts on both the doctor and his family. Though there's not a lot of pressure in his job, the hours can be very long, and he has only two free nights a month when his calls are taken by a colleague in another village. I chose to be a single-handed doctor. I think that um, I very much like the theme of the old-fashioned general practitioner who I have very happy memories of as a childhood and perhaps would like to imitate. It's a lovely morning. How are you? Are Though his practice lacks many of the amenities available to Iona Heath, he's just as concerned with preventative medicine. Through tests, he's discovered many unsuspected diabetics, and he's managed to reduce the number of strokes in his practice from seven or eight a year down to only one or two, partly by visiting every month and taking blood pressure of all his elderly patients who can't get to the surgery. Pills. It's just that I want some of those, um... The hospital at Minehead offers him and other country doctors open access to a number of beds, so that he can, if he wants to, always get his patients into hospital and care for them there himself. To talk to Dr. Shree, to ask him really whether you would be well enough to look after yourself. I think so. There are very good facilities here in the village. The council have built bungalows for elderly people. They won an award. There's one who lives in the centre, and they're all heated, and they're extremely efficient. I have a district nurse who works closely with me. She is a district nurse, midwife, and health visitor, all combined. Thanks in part to better health care, people in this country are living longer, and care of the elderly is stretching the National Health Service to the limit. A lot of people retire to Porlock, which means that many of Keith Lister's patients are over 65. It's looking better. There may be fewer single-handed doctors like Keith Lister in the future. Over the past 10 years, there's been a steady growth in the number of team practices. Doctors can, as a rule, make their own choice. One of the strengths of the National Health Service is its flexibility, which keeps it one of the best in the world. I'm a staunch advocate of the National Health Service. I think it's here to stay, and it must stay. I would be very sad to see any other form of medicine here in England. I think it does a good job.